Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today we're doing a Cylon saber saw restoration. It's actually a uh, shop made jigsaw. Uh, I got this uh, saw. Uh, my son's friend, his grandfather passed away last year and he's having to empty out the house and there's a lot of stuff in there. He was a maintenance man for a local hospital and he's got a lot of tools and stuff and I picked up a few things for very cheap. So this is the saw that I want to restore. It's gonna be a little bit different than the usual restoration obviously and I'm gonna handle it a little bit differently. Most of what you can see is pretty self-explanatory so I won't be talking as much as I normally would be on a dinky rescue. So these base plate screws are going to be pretty tight. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, WD-40 on there and let it soak in for a while and we'll return to it. So we're going to take the front off first. It's the most obvious thing to take apart. This is what uh, electric tools used to look like in the 40s and 50s. They were, uh, in this case, made of cast aluminum and they were polished up. And you're going to see what they look like inside. This one has a, a light to illuminate the work you're doing. And there's three screws holding the front portion on. And it's got the mechanism for uh, raising and lowering the blade. The grease is all dried up in there. And the machine does function, but uh, it's a little bit rough. One screw missing. I don't have any experience taking apart these things, so I'm kind of learning as I go. And here the motor is attached to this center segment. It's, it's basically three segments. The center part is the gearbox, uh, the front holds the the oscillating movement for the blade, and the back holds the motor. And the motor, of course, is tied in with all these wires. little guards and clips you gotta keep an eye on and I've pulled the armature out and it's not getting me anywhere because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to loosen up the stator and take the cord out of the back so that's the uh, strain relief on the wire and that wire I'm gonna have to replace because it's in pretty rough shape and I'm not gonna be able to clean it and it, uh, it's a disaster So those are the brushes. They fell out when I pulled the the rotor out of the stator. And that's a little phenolic shield. That's uh, keeping dust away from the motor. And we've removed the light. 
Now I'm pulling the grease out of here. It's all it's all very dry. As I say, the machine was functioning. You could plug it in and run it. It ran a little bit rough. And I think it's because this grease has it, it's very old and it's it's dried up. It's still there and it still works, but uh, it it really needs to be cleaned up. So this gear, you can see it has an offset uh, little shaft and that engages with the oscillating part of the saw blade holder and as it rotates it moves the blade up and down. There's a little bushing that goes with it. Ninety percent of this job is just cleaning all the crap out. The grease is contaminated with a lot of sawdust that's gotten in through the front where the where the lamp is. So the whole body is open and I start wondering if it isn't open in order to get air moving through to keep the motor cool. But when I was doing this that didn't even occur to me. Now there's little needle bearings in there. There's no way I would be able to get that out. Well maybe there is, but I'm not going to try. The bearings are good and I don't want those needles falling out so I've packed it with some grease and that'll hold, hold it in place until it's all put back together. So I go spend a lot of time pulling out the old grease and the crud that's inside there that's dried up and the edges are all with some kind of a powdered cr crusty something that's happened to the old grease. So I pull all that side. I think there's sawdust in there as well mixed in. So I'm only showing a little bit of the cleanup but I spent a lot of time cleaning all the crud out of here. I could have disassembled this as well but it's functioning well. It's, there's no grit in it. It's, uh, it. It seems to be good so I'm just taking out the crappy grease and I will replace it with fresh grease. So I've cut the wire. I'm not going to try and rescue that. I have another I have another cable that I'm going to replace it. It's a used cable, but it's in really good shape. So it's still going to be a vintage thing. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the two front pieces together so that I can clean them up and polish them without getting a bunch of crud inside the gears. That's why I'm putting paper towel in that opening and this way I can polish it all without crud getting inside. So putting on the safety glasses and going to the buffing wheel and I spend a fair bit of time probably for jobs like this I should have a bigger buffing wheel and spend a little more time. This one still has a, a guard around it for the grindstone and Maybe I would have an easier time if I didn't have that there too. Normally I'm just polishing tiny little things, so... So the bulk of it is buffed up, but some of the little corners uh, the buffing wheel wasn't able to get into, so I'm going to have to do something about that.
So I've brought out the Dremel tool with a little buff on it and it's getting into some of the corners that the big buffing wheel couldn't but it's not getting into the very small corners. So I'm going with this. This is a grindstone that's very very fine and it's certainly able to get into all the little corners and nooks and crannies. And then it goes back on the buffing wheel to even it all out again. Starts to look cleaned. Now the base, I couldn't get it off with the ordinary screwdriver, so we go in with the impact wrench, and doesn't take much. One, one hammer with the impact wrench, and it undoes those screws. They'd been soaking in the, in the penetrating oil anyway. All these parts, uh, the base is made of steel, but the, but the all body parts are made from cast aluminum, which is beautiful. Everything nowadays is made out of plastic in China, and these tools are much fancier, like when we compare. I mean, the electronics aren't as good, but my goodness, this is a thousand times better than a plastic body that they have now on all the tools. Now, to clean up the rust off of the base, I'm using Evapo Rust, which is the super safe rust remover. I'll pop it in there and I'll pop the screws in there as well and leave it overnight. Now this, I think the reason this tool wasn't even being used was because the end of this blade had broken off in the holder and I spent a lot of time trying to get this darn thing out. I'm only showing a tiny bit of the effort. Then I figured something out. So this is the uh, bracket that holds the tool onto the base and with the angle adjustment and it's all cast so it can all be buffed up as well. So now we go back to the base, the rust is off, you can see there's also paint on there and the screws are not rusty anymore. But uh, now I got to get the paint off of this base little paint stripper now I'm cleaning up these screws they're kind of chewed up but few strokes on the file it cleans them up and then I've got to clean the slots out so this file is this is my Nicholson file and I've got one side the end is ground you can see that there so it only files on the filing surface so you don't damage the mating surface so just a few strokes very quick and these screws wind up looking perfect Now this is the screw that uh, holds the angle adjustment and holds the whole machine down to the base. So I clean that up a bit. It's got paint, so let's put it into the paint stripper with the, with the rest of the base. So a few hours later, take a toothbrush and clean off the rest of the, of the paint. And then I go to the wire wheel and clean up the entire surface until it's shiny. Now I'm going to put some uh, paint on it. I start with a self etching primer. This has some kind of acid in it, so it etches the surface so that it's going to hold on to the surface better. This is going to be a very rough surface item. And this one's out of focus, but it's the this is the metallic silver paint. Now we go back to the motor and cleaning off all the dust, tons of dust on here. Sawdust is what it is. 
to the air can I get rid of a lot of it and I've got to replace well, we've got the uh, the rotor and contact cleaner which I've had around forever bought this at active surplus on Queen Street in Toronto that place is gone so I don't know what that stuff is and it's not replaceable but it's good stuff cleans the contacts did a good job now I've got to put these brushes back in this is a challenge So the brushes aren't worn that much. They're only halfway worn down, so they're still good. Probably for the life of this thing. Some phenolic washers to get the spacing right. So the brush housing has a spring, and then it's got this... It's very simple. It's uh, just the wire end has a has a round terminal and the round terminal goes through the plastic housing and holds the spring in and the brush has a little pin that goes through that uh, terminal end and pushes the spring down and then you just pop it back into place I'm not sure you could do a motor repair like this now because the parts are, I don't know, they're machine assembled, everything is crimped together. They're not really serviceable. This is very serviceable. It's relatively easy to remove those uh, brushes and you could replace them with replacement brushes. I didn't even source any replacement brushes because these ones are, these ones got a lot of life left in them. Uh oh. magic I got that baby in there obviously I had to do the entire job over again so this is a cord it's actually from my father's old circular saw which was not repairable but the cord is in really good shape and so we got a vintage cord going on to another vintage tool Now I was inspired to do these things by watching uh, Hand Tool Rescue, which is a YouTube channel by a guy in Saskatoon who does who does videos just like this. He doesn't talk through them, so I'm debating whether I'm going to even play this uh, soundtrack because it's all self-explanatory. But I love his stuff, and he uh, does restorations just like this. So you can look that up, Hand Tool Rescue. 
Maybe I'll put it in the text. I say I'm inspired by him because this is the sort of thing that scares the bejesus out of me when I watch him doing it. But I'm figuring I've watched a few of them and I'm going, well, you know what? It's it's all pretty mechanical. If you remember where everything was, eh, there's a little clip goes in there. And the nice thing is when you videotape it, you can always go back to when you took it apart and to figure out what you did wrong putting it back together. There's a bit of a mix and match on the videos here because uh, I actually put this thing back together maybe three times before I got it right. This is the mechanical part of it, the gear and the cam and the the, uh, the oscillating blade holder. And while I'm doing this, of course, my hands are covered in grease, so it makes it all slippery and it's gumming up the entire body that I just polished up. But hey, it's only grease. Grease is oil mixed with, with soap. So fortunately it's already got soap so it's kind of easy to wash off. So getting this last screw, it's deep in there. You can't just put it in. And it's a slot screw so it doesn't want to be held on to the screwdriver. So I had to come up with a solution. And again it's the super magnet. course it attracts every other piece of metal but it's already started on most of this whole thing I'm using the original screws which is why I'm having to deal with these slot screws the one screw I replaced on the motor housing because th there was no screw there and there's another one I'm going to show you in a minute that I had to replace now this is a knob I got printed by my friend who has a, a 3d printer can't get a new knob for this thing so I found a knob online that looks like it would match the uh, the tool. It has a vintage look to it, even though it's designed by some kid on his computer. Of course, I have to finish it so that it's going to look shiny, like like a factory knob would look. I've painted it silver, not on camera underneath the uh, this is car paint from Canadian Tire and it's metallic paint and I learned from doing dinky toys that uh, the metallic paint looks better if you put it over top of a uh, metallic silver paint not sure if it's true I wound up putting two coats of this paint I'm not sure if you can see through it but maybe it has more depth I'm not sure I'd have to do two of them and see which one looks better. Now I'm wearing gloves because I've cleaned the grease off of this thing and I don't want to get it all 
gummed up with my fingerprints. So this is the blade holder and it has this slot screw and you can't get the blades that have the hole in the right place anymore. So I'm putting in a new screw uh, and I'm going to clean out the hole with the tap. It's, I'm not changing the, the thread pitch or anything but I want to clean it out because the other screw was a little bit sticky in there. So I'm just uh, running a, a, a flat ground bottoming tap to clean the threads out a little bit. And then I put this little socket head cap screw. This is going to be better because you want to be tightening this the blade down a little bit more than you get from a slot screw so in order to keep it held in place. So there's a blade. There's no hole. I mean there's a hole but it's not in the right position. So now that's going to be held in nicely. So that's just a test. I'm going to take it out. Now I'm putting a bit of cotton in here. I might have figured out that through this channel where the light is, there's an air gap that follows those wires and goes all the way to the motor and everything was filled with sawdust. So I figure put some cotton there and it'll block the sawdust. Here I'm having second thoughts because I'm wondering if the air isn't supposed to go through there in order to cool the motor. But then there's that phenolic screen um, that I forgot to put in and had to redo that motor assembly. So I'm not sure. I'm not going to be using this much so for now it's going to have the cotton in there. If it starts to overheat if I'm using it a lot then I can pull the cotton out. But then it's of course going to get uh, dirty. Anyway, look at serial numbers 26B. How many of these did they make? Both of these bottom screws were a bit sticky and I'm thinking I should have run a tap through those too but I didn't. That label is in almost perfect condition. This thing even though it looked rough it was actually well looked after. So there's my knob all painted up with metallic car paint. That's the final touch on this thing. I think it looks beautiful and it looks like it looks like a piece of Cylon technology. You almost wonder if the guy who designed the Cylons didn't have one of these and he said I'm gonna make it look like this jigsaw. So let's see if this thing works. I'm using a standard blade that's uh, used on my Bosch jigsaw, modern one. And with that screw, it holds in fine and cuts just fine. It's a beautiful tool. So here's what we started out with, just as a reminder. Kind of dirty. And let's see how it looks after being cleaned up. That's just magic. That's a beautiful tool. You could stick that in your living room as a conversation piece. It's just gorgeous. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Timo's uh, hand tool detailing. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe so you see more of these videos. Till next time, be seeing you.